Paul Dens, Northside Development Company is my company's name. Um, I've been in the real estate business for probably 25 years. Um, been in New Haven for a good portion of, we own a significant portion of the downtown office building um, and development sites. We, we're all over the state, however. We're building condominiums in Waterford right now. Um, we own apartment buildings um, in the West Haven market. And, uh, you know, we've built shopping centers. We've done, if it's real estate, we've done it. That's impressive. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, could you tell me a little bit about your experience with John? I mean, how did that happen? How did you meet him? Uh, I met John probably around 2007. Uh, unfortunately, we had a, a fire in one of our buildings downtown. Uh, it was a, a really large fire. It was probably you know, one of the larger fires in downtown New Haven history. We had some old buildings that we had been purchasing along the way to to uh, put together to, to do a development site. And it was the middle of the winter, and one of my tenants, we believe, was doing some renovation in their space, and they either cut a wire, or we're not, no one ever really knew, but we knew about where it started. Um, we believe they, they were hanging some electrical on their own, or they cut a wire while they were working on electrical sparked a fire and a large a lo you know almost a full block of downtown New, ha New Haven buildings burned almost to the ground um, thank God nobody was hurt um, but after the fire trucks left uh, it was apparent that we were going to need some help with our insurance policy and we called a few a few adjusters. Uh, John had come recommended. I can't I can't remember who recommended him to me. He came recommended. Uh, we had a few discussions, and I decided to hire him. Literally a city block. It's almost a city block of of old brownstone type buildings. So they were pretty combustible. They were all they were all hundred year old buildings. Now, what did John do for you, actually? What what value did he bring? Mm -hmm. So, you know, he's an insurance adjuster. He's more familiar with dealing with the insurance companies and than we than we are or were. Um, he actually became valuable right from the beginning. He had us hire a videographer like day two of the fire and the videographer went up on the roof of one of the existing buildings that hadn't been damaged and started videotaping the damage um, and took extensive video that helped a lot after after we had cleared the site because it was immediately we had to go to work to clear the site the city of New Haven uh, also, for whatever reason, decided they were going to be really uncooperative with us um, in, in settling you know, in the insurance claim and, and, and getting work done. So the city of New Haven actually came in and started clearing the site without our permission um, and, you know, and contrary to existing law, actually. So, the videographer was able to document all of the work that the city did um, prior to us gaining access to the site. Uh, it, was, it was very invaluable. We never would have thought to hire someone to, to get all those pictures. I believe he did some videos and he did some time-lapse photography, leaving equipment on the roof, doing time-lapse as the work went on. That's really innovative. So with that process, you were able to document the damage that was existing, because once all that's cleared, it's gone, right. and you just have a slab. Right, it's gone, and yeah, and and you know the city used some practices that that we would not have used in clearing the site, 
Um, I think we would have taken a more deliberate approach where they came in and just cleared it. Um, they ended up, you know, doing some environmental testing, and we we had done some prior environmental testing, and instead of separating contaminated material from non-contaminated material, they just bulked it all together and took it out as contaminated. You pay by weight, and we, you know, we had documentation that they were taking large steel beams out, which are obviously not uh, contaminated. contaminated material, and charging us by weight for contaminated material. So when they handed me a bill for, I think, $2 million, we had, you know, we had documentation that, that they had really used some inappropriate methods of uh, disposal. So, you know, it, well, the case ended up in court. And without, you know, without John having been there and having, you know, helped us along the way with documenting what was going on, we probably wouldn't have been, you know, as victorious in court as we were. They really weren't helping you. No, they were actually, they were, it was worse than that. They were, the city of New Haven at that point was trying to, to, take the property. They actually had us in a meeting where they told us they were going to take the property, which I don't know how they could ever do that, but they were going to take the property. And then after that didn't work, they asked me for a price. And when I told them what, what the price was, they decided they weren't going to buy it. They were going to, they were going to just try to put us out of business. And again, you know, with, with John's documentation and, you know, his his connections with the insurance industry also helped because he actually helped us get some money early on to get some work done. Uh, where if, it were, if we were on our own, we probably would have, you know, gone through the process, settled the lawsuit, and then get, you know a check would have come to us. He actually got the the insurance company to get us a start check so that we could get some work done. That cash flow must have been incredibly helpful. It was helpful. It actually, you know, kind of saved the day in the beginning when you're looking at, at a, a large, large project and you need to get going immediately because, you know, the streets had been closed and uh, we had to hire police and security and put up fencing and, yeah, those funds were, were instrumental at that point. How long did it take from fire to finish cleanup? Uh, I would say it probably took a month or two before the site had been... Uh, completely excavated and refilled with new material and fencing put up, permanent fencing. And then after that point, you rebuilt? After that point, we, it took a while to settle the lawsuit. It actually took about a year and a half to settle the lawsuit. Um, no, we didn't immediately go into rebuilding. We cleaned up which the buildings that we had uh, that weren't badly damaged. Um, we took one of the buildings and converted it converted it into apartments and uh, retail stores. And part of this site is still open for development today. It's become a parking lot, a surface parking lot that we are currently, you know, back then in 2007 and 2008, the local economy wasn't very good. Um, we have, you know, we're working our way through planning and zoning now to do a large development on one of the parcels. It's still an ongoing project, however, at least we have income coming in from the parking. Uh, you know, it's a stable property at this point. We could run it like that for a long time. But, you know, its, it's highest and best use would be to redevelop it. John worked with the insurance company. Um, you know, they took a look at our policy. They dissected our policy. Um, they met with representatives from the insurance company. I think he maximized the value of, of the policy. It wasn't, we came to find out, it wasn't you know, the best policy in the world. Typically, you're buying properties, you ask your agent for a policy, you're looking at price, it gives you a good price, you buy it. Well, it turns out when you needed it, you know, maybe you should have paid a little bit more and, and, and gotten a little more coverage. Um, but I think John maximized the coverage um, that that we ended up, you know, settling. 
for him. Would you hire John again? I certainly would. John you know, he worked hard on this. Um, he was innovative. Um, the company was responsive. Uh, it took a long time. They, they kept focused on it. Yes, I, I think I've recommended him in, to a number of people over the years. And yes, I would use him again. Anything else you'd like to share with me about John or the experience that you had with him? Uh, I think we've, we've covered it. I mean, other than, than, you know, professionally, I think he's a great guy. I've seen him in Florida a couple of times. He's been on vacation. I've been on vacation. And we've, you know, we've met and had dinner together. Uh, you know, he's, he's, a, he's a fun person to hang out with. And, <laughs> yeah, I, I think he's a great guy. Well, actually, I was in Florida on a fishing trip. At the time, I was all the way down in Key West, and we were having breakfast very, very early in the morning, and uh, with a bunch of New Haven guys. Um, and it was around seven o'clock in the morning. We were ready to go off, and it popped up on one of my, you know, friends' phone that there was a fire in downtown New Haven, and we. He did a little bit of research, and we found out that it was my property. Um, we had no idea how you know how large or how small it was, so we got on the boat and we went out, and we went out pretty far. And phones weren't working uh, that far out. When we came back in, my phone lit up with twenty messages and. You know, text messages, phone messages. We were only out for a couple hours, but when we came back into cell range, so we, you know, we, I started calling my office and getting reports from my office, the people who worked for me. Um, they told me how bad it was. We uh, immediately canceled the trip, and all of us got on a plane and came back that night. We got back into New Haven around 2 a.m. from Key West. It took like almost all day to get back. Um, I remember getting into downtown New Haven around 2 o'clock in the morning. The fire trucks were still here. I was wearing shorts. It was December and I'm walking around the site and it was hard to believe the extent of the, of the devastation. And from there, uh, I think I went home you know, went to bed, woke up early, came to work. And the next morning we worked, and my entire staff worked, to gather documents, um, maps of the properties, surveys of the properties, environmental reports of the properties. We put all the information we could together and we brought it to the city of New Haven so that they would have the information also. Uh, so, the, you know, their firefighters would have the information, the police would have the information you know, we kind of documented where we thought there might be any any environmental issues or or basements that you know that might be an issue if they collapsed and anything and everything that we thought that would be helpful. We we, we you know we got it to the fire department immediately. And I've heard from a lot of firemen over the years that we did a great job. I didn't really get that from City Hall, but from from the people who were on the ground, the New Haven police and fire fighters have taken me aside at times and said, you guys did a great job. I wish everybody would, you know, could, could help us to that extent. Um, we had the material, so we were going to use it. We were going to turn it over. Um, That's amazing. Good citizen. Really, you really paid attention and... Well, we, you know, we tried. I mean, we, we did what we could. It was our property. We felt responsible uh, to, to help us in any way we could.